All right, now as we get into setting up with the driver, you'll notice ball position becomes one of the most important things. I take my neutral position spine angle. I want to make sure that the ball is placed for a right-handed golfer, in my case, just off the inside of my lead or left heel. What I certainly want to remember is that at address, I have about 60% of my weight in my toes, and as I transition back, about 90% of my weight ends up on my back foot, but that's done by rotating back against my spine angle rather than swaying back or sliding to my right side. Once I get into this position here, then all my weight starts to transfer, my hips go first, arms and hands follow at the club, contact point, and then swing left to clear my hips to complete the golf shot. Alrighty, now with the face on angle, you'll see how I have the ball teed up probably about half an inch above my club face. One of the big things here for ball position, the ball is forward in my stance. For me being a right-handed golfer, it's just off the inside of my heel, uh, on my trail heel, which is my left side. And again, I'm gonna address the ball like this. Watch how I get into my neutral spine angle position, but I wanna dip my right shoulder back a little bit. This way, when the club bottoms out and starts to attack the ball, it actually hits it ascending, so on the way up, whereas our irons are hitting on the way down. So again, as I come into the ball, the club bottoms out and actually catches uh, the ball on the way up, which will increase your driver distance. All right, as I go to hit this ball here, watch how I use the sequence of motion to really channel my energy through the ball. So I'm gonna address it, I'm gonna take my backswing, I'm gonna rotate around my spine, but 90% of my weight is gonna be on my back foot at the top of my swing, and then I will release it through the ball. I'm gonna hit this ball on the way up to maximize my distance. Get in my position here, swing back, load my weight, and power through. One of the things we all want as golfers is more power. So some things to focus on are quality of contact. So you're gonna see I'm gonna actually hit the ball on the upswing, but big is really the sequence of motion and using the ground force. So I'm gonna address the ball here. About 60% of my weight is in my toes, leaning into the ball. As I take the club back, again, my head stays on top of the ball, but I'm rotating around my spine angle. And then as I come through, I'm gonna hit the ball on the way up the gown. Again, using ground force to increase my speed through the ball, just like this. Hi there, I'm Moira Merrifew. Let's talk about what is rotational power. All right, we're gonna do an exercise that is great before you go out on the course, okay? And I want you to grab uh, either a frisbee or sort of a light weight. This is about two pounds, okay? And all I want you to do is actually throw the frisbee. Don't let go of it, okay? But what do you need to do to do that, right? What is it that we need to do to generate that power to throw it, all right? So just allow and wind up and just feel what are you doing in the body to throw that frisbee, okay? And this is a great exercise before you go out onto the course because it just wakes everything up and gets the power generated from the ground without you even realizing it, okay? So, because by the time we get into all the techniques of the golf, right, we completely sometimes forget that we need that motion and momentum, all right? Let's just take that apart. So, Alan talked about the importance of setup, and we talked last time about neutral alignment, first of all, hip hinge, all right? Just place that lead arm down, so get into your golf stance here. and. Hold on to it with the back arm. And let's just go through the movements of the golf swing. So we need to take this back shoulder. So pull this arm back 
as you start to rotate. All right, as we get to the back, I'm internally rotated on this hip, all right? And I've got a lot of power onto this leg. Then from here, what do you need to do? If you resist this arm in order to get <laughs> the momentum, you need to press into the ground. So then we start to lead and rotate, clear the hips. So we've got that pelvic rotation, clear the hips to then generate that power. So that involves ankle mobility into inversion, eversion, hip mobility into internal and external rotation, right? Hinging at the hip to allow freedom of range, right, into that rotation around the spine angle. What we're gonna focus on today, there's a lot of exercises for the hips and knees, and we're gonna focus on the ankles in our next vlog. Let's focus on that rotation and how the scapula and shoulder girdle play a part in helping you actually get a little more range into that recoil and power that ball. So just take your club and let's mobilize our shoulder blades. So just reach for me, reach that arm forward and push forward and really reach forward to me and reach. So rotation involves these pulling and pushing motions, all right? So if I push towards you, right? Push, push, now reverse and pull back. So I'm pulling back, pulling back. To have a really good, clean rotation, we want to combine the push and pull movement. And if you sort of take note of what you're doing through your shoulders, you will feel as you pull back, right, into that rotation. I'm immediately rotating as I push and pull but I'm also, and that's when you reverse, really working through that upper middle back to gain strength and mobility. Another thing we can do there to warm up, take a couple of weights, or these are toning balls, okay? And Alan also talked about those shoulders releasing, all right? Nice, long release of the club that the arms have to internally and externally rotate. So just to allow for that mobility, actually cross, let the weight like the flexion of the elbow, and just you're gonna go across and just kind of alternate at the front. And so you're kind of opening and closing and then at the back, um, externally rotating. Start slow, and then can you speed that up? And then can you bounce? Now I have to get the core involved, everything involved. Can you speed it up even more? That's it. And then let's just finish off because the pecs get kind of tight and sort of think about that type of recoil, right? And this is a nice stretch because I'm pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. And then you can go side to side if you want to start with, right? I'll probably lose the ball, but because I'm pushing it towards you, pushing it forward, and getting that recoil through the shoulders, opening them up, and getting a nice release to the front because of all that tension that creates. And let's just finish up with just a little stretch. And then just let it swing. And again, lift that up because the back's getting really tight. And release. So, just think about that shoulder girl now each time you go out and that will give you some real extra range into the rotation and the more range that you can have and connection to the ground and power, the farther those drives are going to go down the fairway. Thanks for joining me.